speech from the Pathways Program sharing how some innocent self betterment quickly turned to self resentment in his speech titled Keep Calm and Don't Laugh. Please welcome Toastmaster Patrick Mogan. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Good morning. Good morning. How many of you enjoy attending yoga classes? Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy? I know I certainly do. One of my favorite things about yoga is that yoga classes are very much a free space, free from any judgment or anything that make, make, might make one feel uncomfortable. It is because of this that I'm so embarrassed to share this story with you today. <laughs> this is a story about a yoga class I attended about two weeks ago at a studio near my house. I attend classes at the studio probably twice a week, and I tend to usually go to classes with the same teachers. I feel comfortable with them, I'm familiar, but for some reason, I felt I needed a change. I wanted to try a new class with a new teacher. First mistake. I show up to this class, and everyone looks at me like they haven't seen me before, and they're like talking about how great this class is going to be. This teacher is so excellent. I <coughs> love it. Everything's so great. Either they were delusional or lying to their teeth. Because no more than five minutes after the class started, I realized that I made a great mistake. The first time was the music. Now, for those of you who regularly attend yoga classes, you understand the music is typically very soothing and absent of any of, and all lyrics. This teacher chose an 80s hip-hop playlist. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am, my first downward dog of the day. <laughs> I loosen up, and I hear Bobby Brown's My Prerogative. <laughs> I'm like, hello? <laughs> and she just thought this was so normal. She gave a little hip swing, and she was putting us through different flow positions. I'm thinking, what is wrong with this? But it was only going to get worse. You see, I could suffer through the Michael Jackson and Shaka Khan playlist. But I would finally get some rest. It was about 45 minutes into the class, and she asked us to get into Shavasana. For those of you who are unfamiliar, Shavasana translates from Sanskrit roughly into corpse pose. It's probably the easiest pose you can do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this pose is normally accompanied with some light meditation after you've been physically exhausted after a long class. So she turned the music off, I could focus. But it was the way that I was brought out of this meditation that was so alarming to me. You see, she used a Tibetan med meditation bowl. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, it's kind of like a mix between a gong and a, and a noisemaker. And I swear this woman was training for the world championship. Because not only did she hit that gong super hard, but then as she spun it, it was like she was trying to break my eardrums. <laughs> Literally like there was a tornado siren in the same room as us. I turn to my girlfriend as this is happening, we both start giggling to each other quietly, and I have to turn over, I'm like, I can't laugh in this class, I can't laugh at this teacher, I can't get caught. Now, that was all fine, until our teacher, without warning, stands up and starts chanting Sanskrit words. Atha! Banda! Satha! Dristi! Just for probably about 45 seconds to a minute. And everyone else thinks this is completely normal. And I have no other reaction but to start laughing. <laughs> and it's not an innocent, childish giggle. This is a belly laugh. And the room is silent, except for chanting swords. I turn over, Rachel is mortified. And so am I. All I can think about is keep your head down, maintain eye contact with anything but our teacher, and just get out of here. Nope, it wasn't over yet. She then decides, yeah, I know we probably should be done. We did that whole meditation thing. But how about a few more poses on the ground? I'm like, great. Just don't look at her. Just get through them. I'll be okay. <laughs> and she says to us, now, thank you very much for such a great class this morning. I'd like to invite you all to close the class with me by saying three ohms. Again, not too uncommon. For many teachers, this is a great way to continue the feelings of Zen that have built up over the last hour. This teacher approached that close with the vigor of a drill sergeant 
attempting to instill fear into a new class of cadets. <laughs> Honestly, that was probably about it. It's half as long as she held it. Three ohms, three more belly buttons. <laughs> this time there's nowhere to hide. It's all sitting up. I'm one of the only guys in the class and definitely the only guy laughing. The class closes. I silently look down and say, no mistake. <laughs> and I have to think it was intentional that she didn't ask if she'd see me again when I left my class. <laughs> I have to tell you, fellow Toastmasters, she wasn't wrong. I haven't been back since, and I'm still afraid to show my face. <laughs>